Hey guys, and today I'm going to walk you through why sometimes when you um, are trying to replicate stuff, you actually don't need to replicate anything. You can do some stuff locally, but you just got to think about things um, in terms of will this affect my gameplay? Is it required that this is a server RPC? Is it required that this property is re replicated? Because the more properties that you have that are checked to replicate, the more work the engine has to do and the less bandwidth there's going to be to go around to replicate things and make things not lag in your network games so i made a little example today and it's a lerp actor okay and now why this example um is a good one i think is because i'm telling the server to start and stop this um actor for everyone but do not replicate the lerping because this is a lerp actor it goes from point a to point b and it does a lerp and if you've never heard of a lerp i'll have a link in the description where you can learn all about them but this is a basic lerping setup so after five seconds it's gonna force an update so everything after this will be forced to happen because this actor if i go to the replication sentence in defaults if I can spell, um, I've set it to have zero net update frequency. It is basically how many times the engine will check this property for, um, no, check this object for properties that have changed and try to replicate them to everyone else. Um, so it's not checking this actor at all. So you could even set it to dormant if you know about net dormancy. But this is, a this is something that you do for network um, server optimization. Um, anyway, on from that, after five seconds, it's going to set should lerp. And all this is doing is setting a start and end location, which I get from getting the forward actor and timesing it by a thousand, if you know how vectors work, and then adding that to the current location. Um, and then I go here, everyone should set that this actor should tick because i'm setting it to true everyone and everyone should set this actor to tick um that's because um i have disabled it by default to tick start with tick enabled so tick is disabled so this is tick every actor has tick and you shouldn't really use tick very often but for some things it can work quite well. And this is kind of an example where I think it can work quite well because it's a small lerp from A to B. It's not like it's gonna be um, very hard for the the um, code to be processed. It's probably, it's a lot better that if this was native, if, if this was C++, it'd be a lot more efficient, but hey ho. So everyone's on tick is, has an elapsed time, which is less than duration of three seconds. So every frame is going to come into here and it's going to lerp from the start position to the end position. And this, the alpha of that is divided by time elapsed and duration, which is free. And time elapsed starts off at zero and duration starts off at three. And every frame, it adds time, it adds the time elapsed, the delta seconds. So how long it took between each frame. And it adds that to the time elapsed variable. Um, I do have a string here that sets a location and shows you the value of the, loca the location, but that's kind of spammy. I'm going to leave it on for the, um, this example, though, so do be aware that there's going to be a lot of print strings on the, on the screen. Anyway, so this all this is is a cube that alerts from point A to point B, and then I'm going to talk about why it is, in my opinion, like a lot more efficient than, you know, um, if you were doing this step as a server call, um, with like an, it has authority check and setting the location just based off the server. One, this wouldn't work. And two, you're doing some uh, more extra work on the um, server. So it, it requires more bandwidth. I might as well just show you what happens. So even the client can get on top of this lip dactor and we both smoothly get brought along, no issues. There's no jittering, there's no nothing. There's no disagreements between the server and client. Um, maybe if there was some lag from one of the servers, that maybe that it would get um, a, it would end up with a little bit of a maybe it would jitter along a little bit or something. But the, using um, delta time is usually how people, 
you know, th- it, it can cause issues um, if there's a lot of lag. But typically people are playing games at 30 or 60 FPS and there's other things you can do to step in to try to make it a little better. But the point being of today's episode is when do you need to replicate and when don't you? You need to replicate some certain RPCs. Like if you want to tell it to start something like I've done here, you want to tell it, you know, you should start lurping. And you want to tell it when should it stop lurping? And in this case, it's when the elapsed time is no longer less than a duration. And that will call a force and an update and it should start lurping. And you know what the really, another key detail is, which I went over, is that the net update frequency is zero. So you would think that this wouldn't um, work over the network because it's not being updated. Well, I told it, I forced it off begin play to start. And then the client client's machine can fill in the gaps all it needs to know is the start and end location and each client has the same duration if the duration was changing it would need to be done and need to be a replicated variable and it would need to be set on a server rpc if it was changing during the lerp but if you did that then you'd probably get some weird results anyway and i hope that example was helpful and if you have any questions Leave them down in uh, the comment section below and subscribe, like if this helped, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.